may or may not like, which will give you some sort of aftertaste. I think just a little water dabbed in a new bowl and kind of put in there before you load the tobacco gives it a, an ability for the tobacco to adhere. And that's what you want it to do. You want to build a cake in the pipe. Yeah. Do you have to let that dry afterwards? No. No, no, no. The, ideally, the moisture is helping that tobacco to cling to the walls of the pipe, and that's what you want it to do. You want it to cling. Is that going to show a different taste or give a different taste? No, nope. no, not really, not really. There's, a, there's not enough. You don't want it soaking wet. Just, to, just damp. You know, okay. it's just, just giving it an ability to adhere. Uh, a lot of your very moist tobaccos will have more of a tendency to adhere and build up a cake. Uh, drier tobaccos or English tobaccos tend to leave less of a cake. You know, they, they tend to shake out cleaner out of that pipe when you're done. Uh, your moisture tobaccos build up a cake, cake a little quicker because they have such a high moisture content. Uh, Basically, it's it's then a process of loading the pipe. Uh, again, there's many theories on loading a pipe. I tend to gravity feed tobacco into the bowl to the top. And I think this is something that's been coined, and you guys have probably heard it, the Frank method. Frank is some genius on the internet that decided to uh, make his uh, process known and it became the Frank method, you know, for whatever reason, I guess. Uh, gravity feeds the tobacco into the bowl to the top and then you just want to take a good pinch of tobacco and just plug it into that pipe. And you're packing it a little tighter at the top based on that plug of tobacco. So what it does is it creates a, a lighter filled bottom is what you want. You want a little more ability to draw at the bottom of the bowl and snugger at the top. It, it, uh, it works, I think, as well as any process. Uh, lighting the tobacco, you just Across the top of the bowl, you want to char the top layer of that tobacco. Uh, just get it good and charred across the top. It's kind of like the process if you smoke a cigar, you, you want that cigar fully lit on the end of the cigar. Same idea with the bowl of tobacco. You want it nice and charred across the top. You'll then tamp it down. It has a tendency to spring up based on the heat and you know drawing on the tobacco. That's called the false light, basically. That initial just charring the top of the tobacco. You then relight it. Same way. have a tendency to rush the process and smoke too fast, uh, which creates kind of a tongue bite that you'll get smoking a pipe. Ideally, if that pipe goes out, let it go out. Don't worry about keeping it lit to a point where you're drawing excessively and getting a hot tongue. You'll get a hot tongue if you draw that pipe excessively. It'll let you know that, that you're drawing too much to forcing yourself to keep the pipe lit. A lot of that has to do with the tobacco itself. So many of these tobaccos come with a fair amount of moisture in them. Excessive moisture creates an inability to keep the tobacco lit. Basically, a good sort of, a, a, I guess, help in determining how much moisture is in the tobacco Take a fistful of tobacco and squeeze it together. If that tobacco doesn't spring back away when you let it go, it's got too much moisture in it. It should just spring back apart as it's let go. 
if it stays in a clump and stays together, it's got way too much moisture. Plus, that, that moisture creates steam that'll burn the buds right off your oh, yeah. yeah. It's not fun keeping a tobacco lid that's excessively moist. Yeah. You'll pay for it. Yeah. Uh, too dry a tobacco, same idea. You know, you don't want a tobacco too dry. If it's crisp and crunchy dry, you'll get the same effect. A hot tongue. You know, it burns fast, it burns hot, without flavor, it, it's just not fun. You know, so there's an ideal sort of moisture rate in tobacco. And that, that varies from one blend to another, but if you keep in mind those general rules, I think you'll be happy with the, the ultimate result. Cedric? Uh, yeah. In relation, I'm very interested in this. Very interested. I'm very, I'm excited about this. Uh, all the things that you said happen, the brain, I'm guilty of all of that because I'm new with the pipe thing. And so, but you got the moist tobacco and you got the dry tobacco. Mm -hmm. What do you do to get the dry back to normal moisture or the moisture one back to normal dry? The, uh, Leave it out in the open or put a piece of apple in one of them? Uh, no apple. No apple. Okay. No, no tobacco will take on a flavor of anything that's put in or near. Mm -hmm. So ideally, the whole notion of any sort of apple or fruit, mm -hmm. you're tainting the tobacco. Okay. You're, you're eventually that apple would mold, and you've got mold. And how do you get the dry tobacco back to a moisture level, and how do you, you get know, the moisture back to a dry? It, it doesn't hurt to take a tobacco that's dry and add a little maybe distilled water squirted inside of it just just a little bit mm -hmm. and mix it up put it in a container and let it sit you know you don't want to smoke it right away when you've done that okay. you're trying to rehydrate something that that's, bag with and it's, it should be gradual you know you don't want to rush that process okay uh, uh, a wet tobacco you can take however much tobacco you want to smoke and sit it in a little pile Sit it out on a piece of paper, on a table, whatever. Flatten it out. Let it sit for about half hour, 40 minutes, and it takes away a little bit of that moisture. Mm -hmm. and then load the pipe. Okay. You know, you, you ideally a, a wet tobacco is definitely something that's tough to work with. Uh, Cedric. Yeah. I find when rehydrating right. that I'll take a little distilled water, put it on a paper towel, right. squeeze out all the excess, and put it in a Ziploc with it. Keep re repeating that, you know, over over a couple days, and it'll slowly rehydrate. I, I think I think this makes sense to me. The the whole notion of a slower process. The slower you introduce that moisture, probably the better off you are, and you will end up with a true tobacco taste versus something that that's been distorted with too much moisture or you know added back into it in a rush. Uh, other than that, you're just you're smoking that pipe down to the bottom ultimately. As you're going along, we all will tend to, and again, depending on the type of tobacco you're using, you'll get moisture in there. Uh, working a pipe cleaner through the end of the bit helps to reduce that moisture. You just, you don't have to pull it, you never want to take the pipe apart while it's hot. So while you're smoking, you can just take a pipe cleaner and work it through there. If you sense that you're getting moisture back through the stem, and that's common with a, especially with an aromatic tobacco, you'll get a fair amount of moisture accumulated through the shank and the stem, and you're keeping that down with the pipe cleaner. You're just working it through, pull it out, and continue smoking. Uh, you want to smoke the pipe down to the bottom of the bowl, As you're going along, keep tamping. Use your tamper. It keeps the tobacco burning at a nice even rate. The tamping process. Joe, you had a question? I have a, yeah. You said this whole process right there is a brand new pipe. When is a brand new Regardless. Pipe? Regardless. Regardless. When is a new pipe broken in? A new pipe basically. Or is that just my field? 
you know, it varies. It can vary from eight to ten bowls of tobacco to I've had I've seen it written that people said it took them a hundred pipe loads to get a pipe broken in. You know? Which sounds excessive to me, but I, I guess it has to do with ultimately Mother Nature and that piece of briar. 